In today's reality, when certain countries use nuclear leverage, it's vital to have powerful intelligence tools. The US is already testing a rather ambitious project in this particular area and it will be showing it to the general public before long. Today, we'll be talking about the US Air Force's top secret program, the semi-piloted strategic multi-purpose 6th generation reconnaissance aircraft SR-72. Let's figure out whether it can still be called an airplane or if it's already a rocket. We'll also cover the previous pivot of American air reconnaissance, the legendary SR-71 Blackbird. The era of hypersonic reconnaissance aircraft began over 60 years ago. There's a story out there that Dwight Eisenhower, US president at that time, personally gave the order to create a super-fast aircraft that would be impossible to bring down. Having passed said order to the designers of Skunk Works, a subsidiary of Lockheed Martin, back in 1960. This came after the then-advanced U.S. Air Force Reconnaissance Aircraft U-2, piloted by Gary Powers, was shot down over the USSR. The designers faced numerous challenges related to the limited possibilities the technologies of that time provided, or rather, did not provide. This included both air resistance and the temperature on the upper edges that arose when going at speeds of more than 2,000 miles per hour. At the same time, it was these parameters that were considered optimal for performing the assigned tasks. At that time, such a speed for aircraft was possible only in theory. It was decided to make it from titanium alloys and paint it black because of the thermal properties of black paint. This, in the end, softened the temperature contrast. Then the apparatus was first called the Blackbird. The case was made from titanium with titanium tools. Since the contact with this metal using conventional tools worsened its characteristics, titanium becomes more brittle when in contact with cadmium, which coated steel tools. Under the working name of the A-12 Blackbird, it made its first flight on April 30, 1962, after which it was enlarged. One more seat was added for an intelligence officer, the fuel tank capacity was raised, and it was renamed the SR-71 and under its well-known name, it made its first full-fledged flight on December 22, 1964. Just 12 years later, the Blackbird set a still unbroken speed record of Mach 3.2, 2,193.167 miles per hour. In 1990, a plane flew from Los Angeles to Washington in 37 minutes. The SR-71 performed a purely reconnaissance function, that is, it wasn't intended to be equipped with weapons. From a height of 80,000 feet, it could view 100,000 square miles per hour. The plane also set a level flight altitude record for the machines in its class, 85,067,997 feet. The SR-71 served with the US Air Force for over three decades and was withdrawn from combat duty in 1998. Many believe that the reason for this was the end of the Cold War, after which there was no need for this type of apparatus. Therefore, a new device was not delivered to replace it. And only by the late 2000s did rumors begin to circulate in some military circles regarding a new top-secret program to develop a futuristic strategic reconnaissance aircraft. And they only started talking about it at the official level in 2013. It became known that its development had been entrusted to the same Skunk Works company as before and took place as part of the advanced development programs. About this office, other developers now joke that comic book writers work there, referring to the level of fantastic projects they are assigned. This bureau works with innovative challenges and SR-72 is no exception. Now, it can be argued that the SR-72 is a new hypersonic prototype aircraft that can carry out reconnaissance activities in a semi-autonomous mode. If necessary, it can be piloted and perform the function of breaking through the enemy's defenses. The first test flight could take place as early as 2023, which would be ahead of the launch schedule. It was previously believed that the first experimental flight was possible no earlier than 2025. If it is successful, then Lockheed Martin will start mass production and by 2030 the SR-72 would then become a full-time aircraft within the US Air Force. In this case, it would significantly complement the current reconnaissance system, consisting of a branched web of satellites and unmanned aerial vehicles UAVs. However, one should still wait for the test results. It is expected that it'll be able to reach speeds twice as high as that which could be achieved by any device of this class, 
the SR-71 Blackbird we mentioned. In other words, Mach 6 or 4600 miles per hour. Such a speed, as well as the deployment of a network of aircraft carriers and U.S. land bases around the world, creates a situation in which there will be no point on Earth where the U.S. Air Force reconnaissance and assault vehicle would travel for more than an hour. This could give the Pentagon an all-out advantage in strategic intelligence, although it's not clear how competitors will be able to respond over the next decade while the new aircraft is on combat duty. Most experts consider the SR-72 the successor to the SR-71 Blackbird. It was even hastily called the Son of the Blackbird. But the developers have assured us that although the class of the aircraft will be the same, it'll technically be a completely new machine. The fact is that, at a speed of more than 5 mocks, the object is subjected to hard-to-predict physical influences. They're almost impossible to design in theory, so they need to be investigated in the course of experiments. The Falcon HTV-2, hypersonic technology vehicle operated by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency DARPA, will most likely be the source of information regarding the behavior of technical vehicles at supersonic speeds. The test vehicle serves to provide information on aspects related to extremely high-speed flight and remote guidance control at such speeds. The three focused phases included aerodynamics, airflow at extreme speeds, aerothermal effects, air temperature at extreme speeds, and guidance navigation control. The HTV-2 can reach speeds of 13,000 miles per hour, Mach 20, with a recorded outside surface temperature of 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. However, this device can be viewed more as a guided rocket with a camera than an unmanned aircraft, while the SR-72 project is still an aircraft. Information concerning the first design solutions began to appear in 2017. We can confidently say that the performance of the SR-72 will be no worse than that of its predecessor. It's well known that its size will be approximately the same as the F-22, that is, much smaller than the SR-71, and the crew, if necessary, will consist of one person. In the first photos of the sketches, there was no windshield. Then, based on this, rumors began to spread that the device would be completely unmanned, which would bring closer to reality the primordial dream the American military command has of a war without loss of life. But now we know that it'll be semi-autonomous, that is, the presence or absence of a pilot will depend on the tasks assigned. The SR-72 concept points to the futuristic yet traditional shape of the aircraft, with twin air intakes located below narrow, low deltoid wing assemblies, and a single vertical tail. The retractable undercarriage will allow the SR-72 to land and take off like a traditional aircraft. The SR-72 will be equipped with two engines. The aircraft will be powered by a turbine engine until it reaches Mach 3, while a dual-mode ramjet will provide enough power to fly at hypersonic speeds. Internal air ducts will provide the channels needed to access one mode of travel after another. The aircraft will use the same intake nozzle for both the turbine and ramjet engines to reduce drag. The concept image shows the engines mounted in suspended molds outside the fuselage center strip. Its cruising speed, Mach 6, should be achieved by a combined cycle turbine system from Aerojet Rocketdyne. For a full-fledged repeated operation of such a powerful engine, an ultra-modern cooling system is used, which is built into the very material of the engine via a 3D printer. Previously, according to the designers, it simply did not exist, which slowed down the development of the program, because with any other method of installing the system, the engine would simply melt under the influence of ultra-high temperatures. It was already known to conduct ground tests of this turbine system by integrating a small off-the-shelf turbine engine with a dual-mode ramjet engine, which had an asymmetric inlet and nozzle. It's believed that the first tests of the engine took place between 2013 and 2017. It was the lack of the required technical knowledge in other branches of science and technology that significantly slowed down the project, which they've been working on since 1998, after the legendary SR-71 Blackbird was withdrawn from service. There are plans for the SR-72, unlike the SR-71, to carry weapons that can strike the enemy from the stratosphere. We are talking, in particular, about the hypersonic missile high-speed strike weapon, manufactured by the same Lockheed Martin. 
It's likely that such an aircraft would be able to withstand conventional air defense systems, fly from very high altitudes, and launch its payload before it's even identified. An aircraft at hypersonic speed breaks through enemy defenses and strikes with an ultra-precise missile. This is how it will look in theory and training games at the Pentagon, and possibly in actual wars. The robust fuselage contains the avionics, mission systems, and fuel reserves. Its flight characteristics and inherent power will allow the vehicle to move to a height close to space, unlike its predecessor, the SR-71. This one worked at an altitude of up to 85,000 feet, although exact information about the working height of the SR-72 is not yet publicly available. The retractable undercarriage will allow the SR-72 to land and take off like a traditional aircraft. The technology created by this military project could also have a revolutionary impact on future passenger air travel between major transport hubs. An important aspect of the combat effectiveness of the aircraft is its information and digital content. Even five years ago, such technologies did not exist in the world. Specifically, the progress made in the information sphere, which has helped to accelerate the development of the new apparatus. However, the developers do not want to disclose these details yet. Well, that's all for today. Will the designers manage to once again surprise us with something unique and ultra-modern? And will the designers only please the eye with the futuristic appearance of the new device? Can the SR-72 be called the Son of the Blackbird, or will it be a device of a completely new and different class? And will the geopolitical competitors of the United States have time to provide a worthy response to this super technological development? Share your opinion on this in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.